A New Beginning by James Tate. Evangeline told stories around the campfire, but she was part wolf and no one believed her. Thousands of recreational vehicles plunged from that very cliff in the summer of 91. A white buffalo by the name of Big Medicine presided over the cleanup. He celebrated his 30th birthday by sitting perfectly still in one of the surviving lawn chairs. And a great blue heron lay unconscious atop the silvery mountains of kitchenware. Evangeline was muttering to herself, her own private legends spilled like ruptured rosary beads into the flames, while Rory and John prepared the meal, which appeared wavy and frizzled. Their insecurities were showing, and finally Frank said, Frankly, I don't think either of you are great violinists. It was a poor way to be speaking, especially as we were a lost party, or at least a misplaced cluster. We could hear Evangeline typing something under a stand of pine. A trashy romance, she called it. And we said, no, it is a true account. But the wolf in her would not let go of that phrase, and we had to train our sights on her as commonplace as some endangered species can seem. Collecting stamps had always given Rory tremendous gratification, and now he was pasting a new set into his album sleepily. Frank was gnashing his teeth, as he always did before a big storm, and John was humming an old tune left over from his days as a clown in the rodeo. We were hoping to make New York City within a couple of days, Evangeline had contacts in the manicuring business, and we would pull together and settle our differences. After all, it's still America, we said in unison before blowing out the stars and drifting off into a deep and unsettling sleep. <laughs>